So you want to play Virtuoso, but you don't have any cash to gear it up. It could be you just boosted your first tune and don't know where to start. Maybe you heard that Virtuoso was the perfect place for someone who could never figure out Mesmer before, but you're a little gun shy. It's possible you just don't want to dump down a bunch of gold on a character you're not sure you're going to enjoy. Or maybe you're just looking for a gear setup that is, objectively speaking, cheaper than my date last Saturday night with your mom. This is Virtuoso, but cheap. What's up everyone, you got Mind Circus here with you, and welcome to Virtuoso, but cheap. Before we get started, if you are new to the channel, new to Guild Wars 2, just haven't done so yet, I am currently farming likes and subscribes in an effort to build a channel, and if you want to hook me up with one of those just below the video, that would be a humongous help. And with that out of the way, let's take a look at this and get into the shopping list. So our shopping list looks like this. You will need six superior runes of the afflicted, an entire set of Norgu's armor. Norgu's armor is a cheap version of Rampager's armor, which will form the basis of most of the stats that we'll be using to start out. We will need one superior sigil of accuracy. We will need six crests of the rabid. We will need two superior sigils of agony. We will buy Ruin Maker, which is an exotic pistol off the TP. We will buy Moonshank, which is an exotic dagger. We'll need two Rampager's Rings. We will need a Rampager's Amulet. We will then buy two Bone Fragments of Toquatl, a Rampager's Pearl Quarterstaff, and a rare quality Rabid Spine Guard. So the total trading post cost of this is 10 gold, 87 silver, and 32 copper. That said, the ability to look like a reject from one of Clive Barker's movies is absolutely priceless. Let's take a quick look at the way we put this all together. I am going to bring up the hero panel for a moment. We'll take a look at the equipment. Now, if we take a look at where everything is, what this will do is give us a base critical chance of 67%. That said, with Virtuoso, if we perma fury, we get this to 97 and some change, which is a pretty healthy critical amount. You'll see that our condition damage is really high when it comes actually to our condition duration we'll see that our bleeding duration is at 62% this way. This obviously not quite optimal, but when we're talking about a cost of, you know, less than 11 gold, I think we're in a good spot. Now, one of the other things to keep in mind is those crests of the rabid are going to go here in our jewelry. We will obviously be putting the runes of the afflicted in our armor and in the weapons, we will go with the agony accuracy setup on both of those. Let's take a quick look before we go on at what I consider to be the optimal way to put this together. Now you're gonna see this build on another Mind Over Meta video coming up soon. I think it's super strong. I came up with it while making the budget build. Uh, when we take a look at it in the future though, we're gonna wanna run this in complete Vipers. We're talking about Vipers gear, crate runes, bursting sigils, earth sigils. So with that said, hey, let's take a look at the build at this point. So the build looks like this. We will be running Chaos, Dueling, and Virtuoso. Under Chaos, we will be using Illusionary Defense. Gain a stacking damage reduction whenever you summon an illusion. This will be part of what keeps this build alive. When what is, you know, largely damage gear, we're running some of the Rabid that has a little bit of defensive stats. As we get better with this build, we're going to want to lose the training wheels, so to speak, and move to complete Vipers. So this is where we're going to start by getting a little bit of defense. We will be using chaotic potency gain condition damage gain additional condition damage while wielding a staff staff and trident skills uh gain reduced recharge this obviously a really big win and part of the reason that we'll be running staff staff is a great weapon we'll take a look at that in the gameplay section finally we will be using bountiful disillusionment gain stability when you use a shatter skill if you've been watching any of my videos over the last little while you probably have a really good idea 
idea about how I feel about stability. Stability, is, particularly when we get into the later zones, is of very big value. When we get to places like Echavald, stability is going to be huge. Now, you do have other options. That said, I'm going to live and die on this hill right here. We're going to be running dueling over in dueling. We'll be taking duelist discipline pistol attacks from you and your illusions have a chance to cause bleeding. This will be a nice little DPS increase for us. We will be running blinding dissipation shatter skill two inflicts blindness. The reason we're taking this is that the options just aren't very good. And we will be running Superiority Complex. Your critical hits deal more damage. Critical hit damage against disabled foes or foes below the health threshold is further increased. This is part of the reason that we're going all in on our critical rate. And you'll see how this comes together in the gameplay section. Down here under Virtuoso. So we're going to be running Jagged Mind. Blade attacks inflict bleeding on critical hits. But what's more important about this is a percentage of your condition damage dealt heals you. This is very much like other traits in the game that will refund us life based on critical hits. We get more value off this the more damage we do. So what this is to say is that we're going to cheap out and run this Rampager's gear at the beginning. But to really start feeling this trait, we need to get into that Viper's gear as we're moving forward. So do keep that in mind. Um, this gains more, uh, more value to you, the more condition damage you start doing. So it's kind of the reason that we're going, you know, back and forth on both the power and Condi damage on this. Sharpening Sorrow gain Fury when you activating a Blade Song. Fury increases your expertise. Expertise obviously is your condition duration. So as we have Fury, when we perma Fury, which this build actually does, we will get increased value by getting that expertise, which is not something that we see a lot of in budget gear sets. So this is a really, really big win for us. Finally, bleeding you apply deals increased damage, stock a blade after applying enough stacks of bleeding to foes. This again is a really, really big value. Uh, bleeding is going to form pretty much the meat and potatoes of our Condi damage. So as we get uh, further and further, this will start giving us more and more value. So before we get into any gameplay at this point, let's take a couple of seconds and let's look at the way I have the bar set up. One of the things to keep in mind is I'm using a lot of signets. Now, in most cases, I use the signets because they are really just a cheap, easy way of increasing performance while we're getting to learn things. But in this case, two of these signets are absolutely really important. Now, the first signet that I'm using is signet of ether. Signet of ether I am using because it does give us a little bit of passive heal. This, in addition to the way that we have it traded, getting back the heal off Condi damage is going to be a really big win for us and kind of put us into that situation when we don't have to be watching our health bar very regularly. I'm going to be using a uh, rain of swords rain of swords objectively was the best damage solution I could get off this. Again, there are other options in the mesmer kit. Um, they, we do have one stun break in here, so we'll keep that in mind. Our stun break is signet of midnight, but the reason why I'm using these two signets particularly is because one is increasing our condition damage and one is improving our expertise. We don't want to fire these off regardless of what they are doing. However, this is our stun break. We may have to use this uh, at some intervals, but we want to avoid using this. Um, there's enough CC on the kit that we don't have to be kind of proccing this on a regular basis. Finally, a uh, thousand cuts. Uh, there is no better option when it comes to this specific build than thousand cuts. Uh, don't get debated by anything else. Use it, live it and love it. Let's go ahead at this point and get into the basic class mechanic here. And what we are talking about is the blades. If you'll see here, I've got little dots over and this notes the amount of blades that I've stocked. We can actually see these visually as these wonderful little blades over my head. Now, what do these blades do? They trigger on your F skills, F1, F2, F3, and F4. In the real world, power damage, Condi damage, CC and what we get off this one is a block. In addition to the block, what we're also going to get is some damage off this. 
This becomes really kind of effective when we put it off in the middle of a bunch of pressure. Starts doing a lot of obviously blocking for two seconds, but it does increase our damage as well. It's a really valuable skill if we use it correctly. That said, the other damage that we're going to do obviously is going to come off our weapon skills. All our pistol skills are going to be doing bleeding because we've traded for that. So that is a very big win. All of our skills here are going to be doing damage. Other skills that are doing damage here on this kit are going to be Reign of Swords. We'll put that down. We'll get some vulnerability off that. And our big damage is going to come from Thousand Cuts, which is a really kind of nice skill that's just going to fire out a bunch of damage at people. Now, this is also really valuable when looking to clear trash mobs. So I'm going to highly recommend you keep a very good eye on that. Let's look at the staff really quickly here. We get damage on this one, okay? We're also getting Fury generation. Let's talk about the Fury for a couple of seconds. Uh, Fury, we're gonna get off the staff. We're also gonna get Fury off uh, our CC here. We get Fury off uh, the uh, two here, so off our Condi damage. So between these three skills is how we are going to really be upkeeping our Fury at all times. So basic gameplay on this is going to be to go in and do a buttload of damage is kind of the best way to put it. Virtuoso is really a damage spec, so we'll keep that in mind. We don't want to obviously try to twist it into something that it's not meant to be. It is absolutely a damage spec. It does uh, really good condition damage and power damage. We can trade it for both. We've kind of done so on this one, so we'll keep that really heavily in mind as we're going forward. I'm going to come in, keeping in mind that usually when I start an engagement, I will start with all flat five blades so I'm gonna hit the two on this one with the Condi damage I'm gonna hit this one first because it's my biggest damage option off this one the way that I'm traded it's also gonna generate the fury that I love so I'm gonna put that down and then I'm gonna start hitting a bunch of skills off cooldown it's kind of that simple. Let's look at the staff for a moment because there is something I'd like to touch on here. The staff is generating Chaos Aura for us. Now, Chaos Aura is maybe not the most powerful aura, but it is pretty darn good. So let's look at two ways to generate that and what it is. If we hit this here at this point, We've got Chaos Aura, give yourself random boons or your foe random conditions whenever you are struck. So I really like to proc this. There are two different ways we can proc this. Obviously we can proc it off the four, which is pretty easy. We can also proc this by putting down the five and running a combo into it. So if we go with the five and then the two, we get an extra little bit of Chaos Aura there and it is pretty powerful stuff. It isn't as good as a couple of maybe elemental Astoras, but it is pretty good. The other thing to keep in mind is we get a really solid daze off the four, uh, five on this. So with that in mind, let's talk a couple of seconds about CC. As I just said, we get a fair bit of daze off the five. We get daze off our blade song dissonance. So our F3, that's really, really powerful. Additionally, we're going to get a bunch of uh, a bunch of days and stun off Magic Bullet. Let's take a quick look at Magic Bullet here. That's a whole lot of CC there. You really shouldn't need for anything else. If you do, there's a mantra that you could put in here, but I would highly recommend not using it at this point. Just get used to what you have. Uh, it is a really, really powerful kit. Uh, one of the other things to keep in mind, the Phantasmal Warlocks here, when we put them down, are gonna generate some vulnerability. So putting those down, okay, is gonna generate, there's 12 stacks of Vuln. Let's put another bunch down there. That's 16 stacks stacks of vulnerability really quickly and for the uninitiated that's an extra 16 percent damage that's really really powerful stuff when we're kind of putting it all together so I'm going to leave it to you to kind of, you know, develop your own way to play this, but I'm finding it really, really powerful. As I mentioned, we are going to get a lot of value off Signet of Ether. We're going to be healing off our condition damage, and we've got our really nice solid block here with Blade Turn Requiem, which is really, really powerful. And again, it's dealing a little bit of damage at the same time. Really good to fire that off in the middle of trash mobs. And we do have our oh shit button on the staff too, where we can just flip back. And really that's kind of it, my friends.
And that is Virtuoso for open world done super cheap. I think for less than 11 gold, you can't go wrong on this. It is absolutely capable when it comes to things like HOT hero points. Uh, didn't test it on some desert bounties or anything. Didn't really feel the need to do it, but it really does competitive damage. Um, it does kind of cap out. You're going to want to get into that Viper's gear with the crate runes as quickly as you can. But when you're first starting, if you want to make up your mind, whether or not this is the way to go for you or not, I think this is the best way to do it. With all that said, I am going to thank you all very much for watching. I'm going to remind you to have fun in game and min-max your real life. And I'm glad we took this moment. We'll see you next time.